that a joke? No, I'm serious because we would have to have a committee for this. That's all that happened on Wednesday. All right, so uh, let's get ready to start the meeting for March 6th, Planning Board. Uh, my name is Michael Bonifant. I'm the vice chair. All five members are here, but Dylan can't be in person, so he's here on the phone. We'll take all votes by roll call. Uh, we'll start the meeting, as Dylan always does, with uh, open forum. Joe? Uh, just if anybody is here for 73 Brookside Road or 60 Pleasant Street, those uh, applicants have requested to continue those petitions without any discussion to a future meeting. Um, so just again, they're likely to be continued without any discussion. <clears throat> Jeff? Um, <clears throat> just a, a quick announcement that if anyone is here tonight for the firearms petition on uh, 359 Littleton Road, I just want to remind the public that the public hearing portion of that application is closed, so the board is not allowed to take uh, comments relative to that specific application tonight. The public hearing is closed. Great. Uh, anything for open forum from the board? No. Nope. Dylan? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, so we will open this up to open forum. Uh, I suspect there are a lot of folks here that want to talk about uh, the gun shop and the proposed or sus suspected proposed bylaw amendment. Um, again, we'll certainly open this up for some comments. Uh, we cannot talk about the, uh, the application that's already uh, pending. Uh, that hearing is closed, as Jeff had said. Um, we're certainly willing to listen to comments. We do have a busy night, so you know we can't let this go on forever. Uh, but if you want to step up to the microphone, give us your name. Mr. Chair, before they talk, um, I do have issues with this. I did watch the selectman meeting. I know that they have requested our input. It will be a discussion item for one of our upcoming meetings. It's not tonight. We do not have the benefit of seeing the draft the proposed draft bylaw. I appreciate there are a lot of people here with a lot of ardor who want to talk. I personally feel it's not appropriate at this time because uh, we do not have the benefit of the, of the information yet. We're just going to hear the same stuff we heard the last time. I don't want to spend two and a half hours meeting on this. If the other board members are happy to let people speak, that's fine with me, but I would like to put a cap that it ends within 15 minutes. Nobody has more than a chance of speaking for more than one or two minutes. I think we can play that by ear. Yeah, I, I, we can't spend yeah. the whole night on it. So. I, I, uh, I agree with Kate on that. I don't know if you guys can hear me, but I was, gonna, I was gonna suggest, Mr. Chair, that we time block this open forum for maybe 15 minutes. That's reasonable. I think the other thing, Mr. Chair, is um, it needs to be kept more generic in terms of the overall issue. It's more for the future. We really should not be in, in any manner soliciting any inputs that are uh, to, to circumvent the open hearing process. We, we've closed the hearing on this particular matter. So there really shouldn't be anything being presented relevant to the item that's before us tonight in terms of the change <coughs> of use. Agreed. Yep. All right. Al Prescott, Lakeshore Drive North. I will not speak about anything that you're going to vote on later tonight. I will, however, um, just make a quick comment about a proposed zoning bylaw. Um, I've served on many committees in this town. I'm the um, fence viewer for the town and most recently served on the town school and safety task force. And there are three simple items I'd like to leave you with. First, you'll hear from some people on the other side of this debate that this is a health and safety issue for numbers of, numbers of gun shops that might want to open, of which I don't think there are that many. Speaking of from the, everything we looked at in the town school and safety task force, we found no, nothing even remotely related to that, and it was not even a consideration. You will find no credible source saying that there is a health and safety or public safety issue with a gun store in town, number one. Number two, tissues. I'm, I'm serious, tissues, the things you blow your nose with. One of the folks at the selectman debate mentioned that the school that their kids go to, the teachers solicited from the, each student in the class to bring a box of tissues to school because they don't have any. It seems silly that we would consider any bylaw in the future that would reduce the tax base 
The inventory in some of these stores is quite valuable and they pay for quite a good tax on it. They'll buy quite a lot of tissues for the school and probably other things. And the third and final thing I'll leave you with is that I can't think of any situation where we cap a, something that is constitutionally protected. We do not say, well, you know, we've, th I've noticed that there are too many uh, Trump 2020 uh, lawn signs. We need to put a cap on that. And by the way, there are. <sighs> but we don't put a cap on that. We don't cap free speech. And the Second Amendment is not to be capped just because it's the Second Amendment. And thank you all very much. You do great work. Thank, thank you. you. Hi, my name is Christy Bates. I'm on <clears throat> Pierce Avenue. Um, at last Tuesday's select board meeting, Jeff Morissette reviewed the town's draft bylaw zoning amendment for firearm businesses. It is my understanding that the bylaw revision will next be reviewed by the planning board at their March 20th meeting and then back to the select board for a review on the March 28th meeting. Um, I'm here to ask you that you hold a joint meeting with the select board as soon as possible to expedite the process so that a public hearing notice can be posted and a date for special town meeting can be set. Since both boards have a say in the process, it only makes sense that you review it together. A delay in the process allows for more firearm businesses to move into areas outside of the excuse me, proposed zoning. So I hope you will consider a joint meeting with them so we don't have to toss that football back and forth. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Dave McEwen, Morrison Lane. Um, as a Westboro resident, and regardless on how you vote tonight on the draft decision for um, PB 2302 SPR at 359 Littleton Road, Suite 2A for the Legal Arms Company, I just wanted to be one of many to urge you to come together at the select board, ideally next week, to start figuring out how to write out safe and sensible zoning of firearms, retail, and manufacturing bylaws, because without zoning bylaws in place, it can turn out like the mill in Littleton. One gun shop may be able to get his doors, um, get in the doors of Westford. There needs to be a limit, especially when this gun shop will be labeled to sell light manufacturing parts such as AR-15 parts, a rifle known across the U.S. as being used in mass school shootings. Please understand that this isn't a decision that should wait, and a special town meeting needs to be held in May, not October. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Titus Palmer, 15 Bose Road. I've lived in town my entire life and, and been on various boards for the last 27 years. And, and I hope in anything that you're asked to consider in the future, this board would remember that it is an independent board. And I would hope before you put any restrictions on any business in town, you substantiate the need with facts, not just public opinion or emotion or feeling. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Al Rosinski, 13 North Hill Road. Uh, I've lived in uh, town for close to 30 years now. Been a, a sh member of the Westford Sportsman's Club, shooter all my life. Um, when I thought about I, I was at the uh, selectman meeting and heard some of that discussion. And when I thought about uh, the situation afterwards, I thought about the gun stores that serve the Westford uh, community, which is substantial. I'm told that it's something like one third of households in Westford uh, have a licensed gun owner in them. Um, places like uh, Cabela's down in Berlin, um, uh, Shooters Outpost up on Daniel Webster Highway, uh, Bass Pro up in Hookset, uh, Shooters Outpost in Hookset. Um, if, you, if you're familiar with these stores, one thing you'll notice about them is they're all a long way from here. So we, it doesn't surprise me that uh, a smart businessman looks at Westford and the number of uh, firearms enthusiasts in town and says, this is an underserved market, and I think I can make a, a go of it here. Um, the other thing that I would point out about these uh, uh, existing businesses 
is they're not relegated to some back alley uh, um, or uh, walled off from the public as, as some people suggest maybe they should be. Um, they're part of big thriving uh, shopping districts like our Cornerstone and like Route 10 in general and, um, and even bigger shopping uh, areas than that. And they're welcomed in there and, and I'll echo um, Al's previous comments that I am not, not aware of any kind of safety or legal problems that have happened in any of these places. So I, I hope everybody will keep an open mind to that and um, consider that when you're voting. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> Okay, anybody have anything else? Great. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for being brief and respectful to each other yep, and adding great remember. comments that make yeah. sense. So. In like 10 minutes, so. All right, uh, moving on. So we have 73 Brookside Road. I have a motion to continue this till the May 1st, 2023 meeting. So moved. <laughs> Second. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. Bob? Aye. Kate? Aye. Aaron? Aye. Dylan? Aye. And I say aye. Uh, aye. Moving on, 174 Littleton Road. Uh, Joe, you want to give us a rundown on this? Sure, Mr. Chair. Um, so I think the last <coughs> outstanding item, if you will, during the last hearing was looking at the traffic circulation uh, getting into out of the site and then how a car would physically be able to turn uh, to get to the drive proposed drive through window. Uh, it has been reviewed by the engineering department. They have uh, approved the proposed plan. Um, so you do have some draft decisions in your packet, um, one for the site plan review, one for a special permit for the drive through. So we're happy to take any comments or edits you may have to those, to those decisions. And we think we do have a representative here uh, in case you have any further questions. Right. And you said, uh, you said, I believe you said engineering's all set with this? Correct. Yep. Yep. Um, it's funny. So we went by, we were looking at the plans last meeting, and I went by afterwards, and there's a lot more space than it really looks like on these plans in there. I don't know if yeah. you were able to go through there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'll go to the board. Well, go to the board. I do have one. Sure. So I appreciate now seeing the traffic flow. I think it does emphasize uh, where we will have a crossing of traffic that exits. Um, I'm glad to see that we have a, a stop line, and I'm assuming there's a stop sign. If we can go to the other chart, it might be a little easier to work with. Yeah. So on this one here. So I'm assuming that's a, a stop sign over there on the left. Correct. Okay. Stop sign as well as a do not enter sign. The only other thing I'm going to suggest here <coughs> is I was wondering if possible from that point down to the entry into where it's marked ATM, whether we could do some markings on the pavement just to kind of guide people to kind of stay to the right and stay in the lane that you've marked here um, just to keep them away from the big trucks because um, people might have a tendency to kind of come down the, the more on the middle mm -hmm. um, even if it's a dash line but something that kind of hints at this is where you should try to travel as you're entering this site um, and I'm just trying to keep it away from this this loading dock here on the right but otherwise, I appreciate this. This this does help us see the, the traffic flow um, uh, much clearer than last time. I think it's a, a great point. By the way, Josh Klein from Stonefield Engineering, we're the, the engineer of record for the, the project. I, we, as kind of you know representing Chase, uh, who would be the future tenant here, you know, I don't think we have an issue with that line. Our only concern would be that Whole Foods, as the, the tenant there, they do have rights so that is, you know, we would propose that, but we can't control if, if Whole Foods wouldn't accept it. So as long as the language could be written in a way that the, you know, the applicant will propose it, but it's subject to the landlord. And and, the and that's more than fair, because obviously what I'm trying to do here is watch out for the, the rights of Whole Foods. So if they choose to reject this, uh, that's their, their right as well. Okay. So I'm fine with that. I was going to say, I personally don't see the need. I've driven actually back there. Yep. And um, it is what it is, especially when, once they put in the parking area and parking area lines, it, it, it might make it obvious to the people. I can't imagine there's going to be a ton of traffic just going to an ATM. Yeah. 
Yeah, I just don't know if there's going to be a no, queue at any time. And I've never seen a lot of traffic going to Whole Foods either, so you right. know, I, I I don't see the need to put in a dividing line. I think a car will know not to hit a truck. It's not so much not to hit the truck as it is to give the trucks the leeway for making a, a comfortable exit out, especially if we start yeah. having some kind of a queue here, which I don't know when we yeah. will or will not. For if it helps the board, you know, we I've worked on um, our office, Chase Banks, across the, the northeast region, and, you know, we have counted banks as well in the New England region, and on average you have about zero to one cars at any given time in the ATM lane, and at the most we see three to four. So the plan as shown could hold four cars, including the one at the ATM. So, again, we, we never envision this will ever be a yeah. queue or a backup, if that helps. And the other, I appreciate that. And the only other question I had was just to confirm, it's really just a bump out from the, the, the structure of the building, correct? There's no overhang of any type. So there, there's no height restrictions really per se. There is a, a slight canopy over the ATM itself. It, it projects about 18 inches. Um, it's the clearance, I'd have to, I could pull the architectural plans, but it's, it's plenty high. I, I want to say maybe 14.6. Um, but it's, Again, slight more of a convenience when you reach out the window. You don't want to get wet. Your money, right. your checks, things like that. So okay. Okay. Um, I just had a question on your turn analysis. What's the difference between the blue and the red lines? Got it. So the red is the tires, and the blue is the outside of the vehicle. Okay. So, like I'm noticing, the blue is very height between the building and mm -hmm. whatever the, that barrier is to the right. I'm just wondering if the barrier should be moved over like a foot to the right or something just to give cars more space. So, so the, the vehicle we run, it's, it's equivalent to an F-250. It's a very, it's a very big vehicle and um, I know, it's like your So car. we're, <laughs> yeah, this is a pretty standard width, you know, ours only, you know, 6.5, 6 feet wide. I mean, the, the vehicle we're running is almost 7 feet, like an F-250, yeah. so we're not that concerned. I mean, our goal is we don't want to give too much room, um, so we're kind of comfortable with the width. I think at the end of the day, if the board felt like an additional 6 inches to 12 inches, I don't think it makes or breaks our is application. Is that typical for what you have at, at other places? Yeah, we typically show 9 feet. Because I know people come in there, they tend to go, some go over to the right, and it's like, oh my crap, I have to go to the left there. And I can just see them scraping something. That, that, that's the only reason, given the most people are not race car drivers. Right, but I think if engineering was going through yeah. it, they don't have an issue. I, I, I think they probably have the models to figure out yeah. how much space is. I mean, there is space to move it a foot or so. That's the only reason I bring it up. So speaking of scraping, um, would, there be, would it be advisable to have a safety bollard at the corner of the structure to protect that structure? I don't see one. No. I don't know. Is what there anything are. protecting the corner of the, the structure? Which structure? The building? The or building the itself. The block building. As you said, so if they're going to scrape, I mean, they could also hit. <laughs> Concrete. Yeah. They hit. They're yeah. not moving the building. It's a block we, building. I don't, we yeah. propose that it's a monolithic curb. It's about 10 inches off the building. So we do actually have a little bit of space okay. Between okay. to help guide people. I think our, our focus is making, kind of helps guide people, keeps their mirror off the building. Yeah. Um, so there is, it's tough to see on the plan D, all the lines kind of sometimes print together, but there is about 10 inches off the face of the building. That's fine. That's fine. But when they're constructing it, if they re somebody says, gee, you know, maybe we should move it over a foot, I think that's a minor modification. If they're, if they're smart and think of idiots like me who don't drive yeah. well. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate you guys doing the, uh, <laughs> the traffic graphic. It looks great. Um, yeah, I think I'm happy with it. It's, you know, engineers, re engineering has reviewed it. I think the engineering firm put it together. You guys have some experience in doing this as well, so I, you know, I'll, I'll defer to the experts there. Dylan? Yeah, thanks. My 
my comments were generally in line with, I think, what Bob was saying, which, which was uh, specifically where the exiting traffic is going to cross over potential like inbound traffic that's coming into the ATM lane. If there can be some sort of lining or striping, or at least in that one section, to kind of demonstrate to the traffic that like you're at a stop sign, you should be crossing this lane of traffic and then making a left to continue out towards uh, Littleton Road was going to be my only my only feedback. But I think Bob covered it in his comments. Awesome, great. All right, um, I'm fine with this. Do we go to the public? Anybody here have anything to say about this? All right, uh, seeing none, we get a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Bob? Aye. Kate? Aye. Aaron? Aye. Dylan? Aye. And I say aye. All right, we do have a draft decision in front of us. Um, Bob, any comments on the draft decision? No. Kate? Nope. Aaron? No comments. Dylan? Nope, I'm good. Oh, yeah. I have one question, though. OK. <laughs> um, the uh, reduction in the yes, application fee. Yes, that's what I was fee. just about to say. We have the. It looks like it was not voted on last meeting, so we have to discuss that tonight before we go yeah. any further. Okay. okay. So um, let's discuss that, Bob. How do you feel about a reduction in the uh, application fee? Well, I'm going to look to town to f uh, first tell me what level of effort was required to review the application before I make that decision. So. I mean, I think in the past you have considered reductions down to the you know, three to five hundred dollar range. The applicants requested to go down to seven fifty, um, which would seem more than reasonable. Um, it did, you know, use a little bit of engineering's time, but um, given the level of effort with this one specific item, it would seem like a reasonable number. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that, based upon that input. Yeah, okay. Seven fifty is fine with me. Seven fifty is fine. Don't have anything to add. Uh, no, I'm good with the reduction. All right. So, is there a motion to reduce the filing fee from three thousand to seven fifty? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Bob. Aye. Kate. Aye. Darren. Aye. Dylan. Aye. And I say aye. They also did request to waive the submission of drainage calculations, which I'm guessing everyone is fine. Can you they also did request to uh, waive the application requirement for submitting drainage calculations, which, given the nature of the project, it seemed like the board was amenable to that the prior, <coughs> prior meeting yep you can tell yeah if you wanted to save time if you if the board is amenable to the waivers in the draft decision you could simply vote it with the waivers granted therein all right so well and we do the two different decisions correct yeah. correct all right. so uh let's look at the decision for slight site plan review um do i have a motion to approve uh, this application of site plan review with conditions as written in the decision and with wait and with waivers as and with waivers so and we'll with the suggested changes this evening right as discussed this evening as discussed this what, evening. what are those he's going to discuss with whole foods about marking some kind of a guideline do you do you want that in the decision or you want that informal uh, i would prefer it be in the decision we can we can add that to the right. decision line. to the extent possible they'll yeah. add that right. i think both Dar um dylan and i kind of have the concerns okay. about okay. keeping the cars kind of controlled yes ready uh, so who has a motion jeff, jeff jeff has a if if you're going to add that may i also suggest also subject to satisfactory review by engineering if there's for some reason that they don't think it's a good idea that we're not thinking of now that would be another out i'm fine I'm fine with that yep. thank you so is there there's a motion is there a second second all right all those in favor bob aye kate aye darren aye dylan aye and i say aye sorry i lost track who made the motion bob, bob. okay thank you all right and then we have the decision for uh, special permit pursuant to appendix a uh, is there a motion to uh, grant the application for the special permit to allow a drive-through, drive-up facility. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Nope. All those in favor, Bob? Aye. Kate? Aye. Darren? Aye. Dylan? Aye. And I say aye. Good. All right, thank you. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Good luck. All right, next we have uh, PB 2304, uh, Men's Zoning Bylaw for the Commercial Recreational Overlay District. Jeff? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, 
As you recall, this hearing was opened at your last meeting. Uh, this proposes two avenues of trying to uh, change commercial recreation in town. The first is to simply allow it in additional zoning districts. The second is to create an overlay district um, relative to Kimball Farm and the Shoba Valley Ski Area. Uh, this is intended to streamline the permitting process for those two uh, entities and just to allow, uh, as there has been a voice demand for more commercial opportunities in town. We did listen to the public comments from last time. We listened to the comments from the board. There are some uh, minor additional red lines in here that we feel address the comments raised, including some of the purpose section and some of uh, the rationale. There is, as you notice, uh, what is new in Appendix C, there is a thought to allow for a height of up to 50 feet in the overlay district, but only if the special permit granting authority finds that it is tied to commercial recreation purposes, and it would still have the discretion to require it, to lower it to the height that would otherwise be allowed in the underlying zoning district. So <coughs> you would only have to allow it if you thought it made sense, whether for a zip line or some structure. Um, so it just gives you all that uh, discretion. And it would avoid what we're trying to do, perhaps some um, trips to another board before coming back to you. So, and this would just, it still allows full review, still special permit process. The town still retains a lot of discretion on a case by case basis. And we just think this creates more opportunities for commercial recreation and can help um, some, some businesses to have more year round employment opportunities, which would help them. Out. And it would allow for more opportunities in the industrial districts and more options along Littleton Road as well, is the short version. <clears throat> All right, so I'll go to the board first. Well, is there anybody in the audience that has any questions or wants any discussion on this? All right, seeing none, I'll go to the board. Bob? No, nothing other than what we talked about last time. I, I, I see the changes, looks good. I think we cleaned up the consistency of SPGA. Yep, I noticed that too. Um, yeah. So no, it looks good. I want to thank staff for all the work you've put into this. I do <clears throat> still have issues with section 894. That's page 34 in the packet. Um, uses by special permit, including but not limited to restaurant. I'm fine with that. Greenhouse or nursery or farm stand. I'm not sure why those are in there, what they have to do with outdoor or indoor recreation and so I, I appreciate why they're in there. Um, another one is the lodging house um, and hotel short-term rental. I would like to have those removed. I would also like to have boarding removed because the boarding originally dealt with the rental and sale of animals on parcels less than five acres, not boarding as in boarding people. I, like I said, I, I, I have an issue with explicitly calling out hotels and, and lodging because it's not, it could be used for other purposes other than related to um, uh, uh, indoor or outdoor, outdoor recreation. And this section does say um, that auxiliary, auxiliary, whatever, uses such as but not limited to. So if an applicant had a good reason for wanting to have some type of housing there, they do have that option within this bylaw, even with those words removed from this. So I, I requestfully request that those words be taken out. So let's just be clear, which words are you looking? I would like to, well, I would like to get rid of um, lodging house, boarding, uh, hotel, short-term rental. And I also would like to understand why greenhouse, nursery, and farm stand are in there. So, if I may, Mr. Chair. Please. 
So the intent here, notwithstanding the specific uses listed, the intent here is to give discretion to the planning board, at least currently suggested to be the special permit granting authority, on a case-by-case -case basis to authorize uses that a supermajority of this board finds is truly incidental and in supporting of the commercial recreation uses. It would not allow them to put those uses in if the board did not find that it wasn't supporting the overall commercial recreation use. It can only, you can may only authorize it if you can make the finding that it supports the overall commercial recreation use, whether indoor or outdoor. So I want to be clear about that. It isn't a I free. I appreciate, but it's a sublimal thing that the words are in there. Well, so on the one hand, we have had some requests that, hey, can't you list, cite some specific examples so people can get the idea or the gist? Um, and then the other is there was a concern about, well, if you start, once you start listing specific uses, well, what if you're contemplating an accessory use to the commercial recreation that isn't explicitly listed? So the goal, whether right or wrong, was to cite some specific examples but make it clear that any accessory use that the board thought was incidental in supporting the commercial recreation use. So if four out of five members did not find that to be the case, then presumably they would not approve that and grant the special permit. So my thought on this is that there, there are so many things that we don't even, can't even come up, you know, think that's going to happen, right? So commercial recreation, outdoor, what the hell is that? But there's going to be somebody with a great idea and that may need something that as an accessory use, but we don't list it or they don't have it and I just would hate to limit ourselves you know well just because it's not listed doesn't mean they can't ask for it right. that's it says yeah. it says including but not limited to right. that, that's right. but it also doesn't say because it's listed it's going to be allowed True. right <laughs> I, ju I just don't want to encourage people to think that way that's all well, I mean, if you're the landowner and you're yeah. in that area, then you're going to think about it. But you maybe you does encourage you know, maybe some constructive use of those of those properties. Yep. Uh, that was just my thought. Okay. Anything else, Kate? I I appreciate why you put the 50 feet in there for the for the height limit, <coughs> and we understand why it's in there. But there, I don't know if there's a way to make it part of the history to. I can't think of a way to get that in there that it's 50 feet because we're thinking of activities that well, require it. We did do some research in, in looking <coughs> particularly at some of the outdoor commercial recreation opportunities. Sometimes there are, are structures relative to that that uh, a number of them could be sited at 50 feet or lesser height. But remember, some in this overlay district, some of the underlying zoning district is residence A which is a maximum height of 35 feet. Yeah. And so there's a lot of outdoor commercial recreation where structures are needed in excess of 35 feet. So that is why, and again, the goal, one of the goals is to streamline permitting right. and not kick them from one board to another um, and sequentially at that. So that would greatly extend the permitting process um, and a lot of time and expense and various board and staff time. So the thought was to try to consolidate for those uses that we think were likely to come up as part of outdoor commercial and recreation. And that's because structures like a, a, a zip line lift or yeah, something, a zip line, line that yeah. those are cons those are considered structures that if it is it's permanently not like a good building. <laughs> if it is a, a permanent structure and it lends support, you know, it's it can be classified as a structure, and even though it may not be a dwelling or a building, <coughs> it still counts. Under a, okay. So if we simply ignored that, we can only yeah. imagine all the instances that someone um, in the residence A that might only need 40 feet height, but they can't get it yeah. unless there's something like this in, in the yeah. bylaw. No, I, I understand why it's there. I just don't like it. No, no, I just why to give people why is it in there <laughs> because a chairlift could or a zip line could go <coughs> in there. That, I think that's all I had. Okay. Darren? Nope, I'm, I appreciate the uh, the changes and the, the red line uh, updates. I think it looks great. 
right. Dylan, you have anything? Yeah, no, I, same, uh, same as Darren. I think it looks great, and um, I appreciate the work that everyone has put into it, and I think it looks good to go. Great. So that comes back to Kate. Do you want to discuss a change? Are you okay how, as it is? I think the rest of the board feels comfortable, but we'll certainly... Well, if I'm going to get voted down, I won't make a proposal. <coughs> I'll go with what it is. Uh, do I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Those in favor? Bob? Aye. Kate? Aye. Darren? Aye. Dylan? Aye. I say aye. Jeff, do we want to vote to on the written report to submit that to? That would be Board of great. Selectmen? And this is a draft prepared by Joe. So we tried to throw out some of the, the thoughts that you folks might want to talk about. It's a starting point. If you disagree or you want to add or delete things, we're open to that. But we are hoping to try to put forth some kind of written report this week because they will be up against printing deadlines very soon. All right, so I will go to the board. Uh, Bob, do you have any thoughts or questions or comments on the report? Uh, no, I do not. Kate? I did not. I, I appreciated it. I thought it was well written. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yep. Darren? I agree. Uh, Dylan? Yep, I, I also agree. Okay, great. So can I have a motion to uh, approve this or to recommend the report as written? So I, I guess I would respectfully suggest that the board vote to support this article at town meeting and offer uh, the written re recommendation report as in your packet. Someone move on it? So moved. Second. All right, all those in favor, Bob? I have one, one before you go, I have a question though to Jeff. Mm -hmm. um, is this the only time we have to vote on this or is it gonna come back to us when it is in the town meeting? So this would be your vote to support so the article and also the vote to provide your written report. Okay, just make sure of that. All right. I'm sorry. Who made the second? Is Kate. that Kate? Kate made Kate. the second. Okay. Thank you. So, aye. Aye. Kate. Aye. Darren. Aye. Dylan. Aye. And I say aye. Thank you very much. Really appreciate Thank it, guys. Great. Nice job. Thank you. Nice job, guys. All right. So that moves us on to our next item, um, which is PB two three zero five seven Carl Thompson Road zoning change from industrial A. Uh, zoning district to a residence A zoning district. Uh, Jeff, Joe. So this is by citizens petition to amend the zoning map to change the underlying zoning of seven Carl Thompson from IA to RA. And I believe we do have the petitioner present, Mr. Chair. Okay. So then, um, Joe, I don't know if you have their materials that you can as they request roll through that. And if you're more comfortable, you can sit at the table. That's fine, yeah. Okay. All right, you. so well, before we begin, can I get a motion to waive the, uh, the public notice? So moved. Second. All those in favor, Bob? Aye. The reading of it. The reading of it. Reading. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, reading, uh, Kate? Aye. Darren? Aye. Dylan? Aye. And I say aye. Um, I move that we open the public hearing. Second. All those in favor, Bob? Aye. Kate? Aye. Darren? Aye. Dylan? Aye. And I say aye. Great, thank you. Thank you, um, my name is Maria McCarthy. I live at 29 Forest Road. Um, our petition actually started the thought process in 2018. We had um, participated in um, opposing a zoning variance for this property. Um, it was February 21st, 2018. This property um, is something that is located in the midst of our backyards in a residential area. It actually bleeds through from 7 Carl Thompson Road um, and sticks out into Groton Road, uh, and from Groton Road to Forest Road. So we're here tonight because we're trusting that you're going to support our community and that we aren't going to keep coming back here <laughs> to discuss this. So you can go ahead and advance. Um, so if you can go down to the residential area slide, I want to try to move this quickly so that, you know, my neighbors can speak as well. Um, in that Board of Appeals meeting, and I'm not quite sure who it was, I'll have to watch the video again, but I remember writing down this quote that this is by and large a residential area. 
more than 75% of the property on three sides, as you can see, is uh, surrounded by residential. Um, it's about 740 feet to the entrance to this property. Um, the four abutting properties have well water to the left. And um, you'll see in a, another diagram that it is also uh, wetlands. So the front of the property is an industrial park. There's three active businesses. They've been there for as long as I can remember. Um, very quiet, don't hear them um, completely. Um, no nuisance at all to the neighborhood, completely unobtrusive. And the current property just has an abandoned uh, building on it. Um, it was, I believe, when we first bought the property, it was, it told us it was cultural. Um, it has a recording studio on it. There was an apartment upstairs. So that nice view is uh, my family's attempt during COVID um, to try to make a little oasis in our backyard. That would be the view in the spring of my backyard looking out at 7 Carl Thompson Road. It is predominantly a white pine um, forest right now, and it is the terrestrial part of a vernal pond wetlands ecosystem. So little critters are spawned in the spring in the vernal ponds. They live in that, you know, the underbrush there in the, throughout the year, um, and then connected to the wetlands. So this is the, uh, I think it's the Massachusetts map that I got it from. It shows that those are certified wetlands to the right, and those, um, the vernal ponds are certified vernal ponds in Massachusetts. The outline is 7 Carl Thompson Road. Um, my house is the one with the little strip there <laughs> between um, uh, 29 and 26. So as you can see that it is almost fully uh, surrounded by residential property except for the three businesses that lead out to um, Route 40. So again, the history use, uh, it has not really been in use until it was purchased this summer by a developer. It was the Department of Recording Studio. I have no idea when they moved out. I remember this little kid living in there for a while. He used to use a laser pointer and scare me to death, but I don't remember when they left. Um, in 2016, 2017, what prompted us to come to the zoning board was it was leased to A1 Landscaping as Landscaping Yard, and we asked that that activity cease because it was just constant daily noise of the backup beepers of trucks, um, breaking noise ordinances, making it almost impossible to work. Um, and when we did present to the zoning board, they the zoning board suggested that they look at other properties and the petition was withdrawn. Uh, the property was sold to, I believe it's a developer, not really quite sure. They're operating under an LLC. Um, and from what we understand, they've been trying to either sell it, transfer the LLC. They've been looking at developers to develop the property. Um, the lawyer, Melissa, and presented her client to us as the first proposal in uh, early December, and it was for a 60,000 square foot three-story drive-through self-storage with 600 units in the middle of the woods. Um, it would require clear cut of the lawn, uh, of the, the forest. It would completely destroy the ecosystem because it's all interconnected. I mean, our whole area is just one big ecosystem. And then uh, the second proposal came um, early January, and this one was, you know, we thought that the storage plant the uh, storage facility couldn't be worse, but then we've got this massive two-story, two-phased approach of 18 contractor bays. It's called an innovation center. If you look <clears> at <throat> it, it's basically 18 contractor bays fitting 18 small businesses in approximately a four-acre land in the middle of the woods. So if you can advance, please, and keep advancing. Um, these are just some, this is one of the plans. If you look at here, just the proportion. <coughs> So just because you can build something and it is zoned, it doesn't mean you should. So that little orange dot is my home. And then that was the proposal of the building. So clear cutting those woods, that green thing would have been the, uh, the self storage. And if you keep going, the second proposal, um, again, this one is just bringing unbelievable hazards to our environment with an unknown number of um, contractors, uh, raw materials, security issues, and I, I do outline those a little bit later on so you can advance, thank you. Um, this is the second proposal for the Innovation Center. It actually goes edge to edge of the property. Uh, phase one would be that first building closest to the entrance, Carl Thompson Road, 
and then um, the expansion to the second one as well. Um, the initial phase one shows the diagram as a building with closed doors, and then if you see, this is the phase two diagram that they shared with us. Um, you can see that they've got the outlines of garage doors, which officially converts us to contractor base. In this diagram, I'm trying to illustrate what this looks like. Um, overlay the green area, which you can see is the complete def deforestation that would happen on the map with the vernal ponds to overlay the structure on top of that in the middle of this residential neighborhood. So one of the questions that comes up, and I know it would come up, is spot zoning. Um, I actually like to use the inverse of the definition of spot zoning in this case because uh, the area around it is predominantly residential. And spot zoning as a definition is the process of singling out a single parcel of land for a use classification different from that of the surrounding area for the benefits of the owner or the property to the detriment of other property owners. In essence, this property being Industrial 1A is doing just that. So I know we're not petitioning to make it Industrial 1A, but just its existence as a 1A property with the amount of protrusion it has into the residences is a detriment to our, us as property owners. So it's inconsistent with the land use and the conservation of this land. It's incompatible with the surrounding use. Um, and there's a strong likelihood of harm to the surrounding properties because <coughs> no matter how hard you try, there is no way you can contain the chemicals or do enough mitigation. Even by using the word mitigation for putting in such huge projects means that you're acknowledging that there's a problem because the word mitigation means that you're trying to make something less severe or less painful. Um, so our proposal to rezone this to residential is not something that's just an emotional plea. Actually, we thought about it very logically. Um, there is a property along Route 40 that is beautiful, rezoned as um, condos. So if you can advance, um, so these are some of the negative impacts we, we are mentioning here. And I have submitted like a 20-page you know, report, and it was actually kind of almost a repeat of what we submitted in 2018 that completely outlines the environmental hazards we have, the well water impact. I mean, there's, this is just fact. You know, it's, it's not, it's logical that this is, these are the impacts. Um, and the bottom line is when you're putting in such a big project back there, we have a right as residents of Massachusetts to the implied warrant of quiet enjoyment, and there's no way with just the noise nuisance alone of the use of that project that we would ever be able to use our property quietly, day or night, seven days a week. Um, and I have the definition of what the implied warranty of quiet enjoyment is for residents of Massachusetts <coughs> and um, this kind of nuisance that would be brought upon us because of this, this kind of structure. So if you can advance, please. Um, we can go over the noise nuisance. I really want to get to the fun part, which is I love these condos. Um, I just saw them driving by. You know, this has been on my mind, obviously, since um, 2018. What's going to move in there? Something's going to go there. I mean, we know something's going to go there. We trust that it would be something that would be reasonable, that would benefit our community, benefit our neighborhood. And I saw these, and I was like, this is perfect. This is an opportunity where we could get in increase the Nabnasset community. You could get a nice little cul-de-sac back there. Um, you could get two, three possible of these condos back there. So rezoning it to residential, we could actually have a use that um, isn't going to be a financial loss to the current property owner. They can sell it. They can build it. They can develop it themselves. Um, but we can actually get some homes back there. I'd rather hear children playing in the backyard than the backup beepers of construction vehicles all day. And uh, I mean, I don't believe that the pollution of people living in, sing in residence like that back there is going to impact the wetlands and the vernal ponds. Um, you know, the blue spotted salamanders and all those turtles and frogs, I think we're perfectly happy with this environment. Uh, not going to particularly coexist peacefully with uh, contractor base. So if you can advance, um, this is just scale, just simple scale. So if you look, what I've done is I overlaid into the diagram on the right just two of those potential, the sizes of what like two of those side-by-side -side condo buildings would look like. So you could get four residents in there at what, like 675K, I believe each one was selling for at Alder Point. You could get another 
You can get a third one in there next to that. So you could build a whole little neighborhood there that is part of a neighborhood as opposed to bringing the disruption of you know, a, an innovation center um, in the middle of the woods. So this is this is why we're doing this. Um, we know it needs to, it's it's a piece of land that has really just laid idle since we moved there. So 20 plus years. Um, the proposal that we've had come our way for developing it as Industrial 1A. I believe it became Industrial 1A because of the recording studio. I don't think the intents were ever for a massive industrial highway size project in the middle of somebody's backyard. Um, so. I think the use case to rezone it to residential A could result in a development of the property that's compatible to us, that will enhance our neighborhood, and will also preserve the environment because anything other than that is just going to collapse the whole ecosystem. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Um, do we want to? What's that? Do the board have any questions before we go to the public? Or do you want to? Does staff have any comments? Or? No. I've, I got a lot of questions because, I mean, <clears throat> it goes back to the history of this. Okay. Um, Do you know the history of I it? I don't know the history of it. That's <laughs> the thing. Um, at one point in time, I think there was a, a more industrial uh, zoning along Route 40. And so when we created the zoning on Route 40, I, I just would like to understand what the extent of industrial zoning was in that area because I understand the concerns for the residences that are surrounding it. On the other hand, the residences got built around an industrial area, and I'm trying to understand when and how that occurred. Um, I'm a little concerned about using zoning to address what would be considered maybe noxious uses as opposed to allowing the process to go forward because blue spotted salamanders, wetlands, are going to receive protection by uh, the CONSCOM process. That's why we don't have a garage. <laughs> yeah, so um, I, I guess, and I'm a little, I'm very leery about uh, zoning somebody's property and, and devaluing the property from what they have, okay? That's, that's my concern. I mean, I don't want to do spot zoning on, on the other hand either, um, but th this is separate from spot zoning. This has to do with well, really let's, let's see the questions and okay. we can discuss but that. Yeah, so anyways, I, but I'm, my questions are getting to all of that. I'd yeah. like to understand the history of this area a little better because I think going back to the 70s or even the 60s <clears> when we had our... Subdivided in 79 zone. and zoned at that point, I believe. Okay. It'd be, I, I really would like to see a zoning map at that point to understand a little more about this property and this neighborhood. I don't... I, we've tried to research. I don't understand how that little strip permeated from the, you know, the, uh, I don't know if you've got, if you have the map to put up, like the, there, um, I, it's that little strip that permeates through from what was industrial area and, you know, subdivide, basically divides my neighbor from me, so I'm 7728. Seven, yes, is somebody subdivided your lots off of that parcel at one time. Yeah. And then left that strip for a road. They left that yeah. for for access for yeah. because yeah, we do have it, we right? do have aspects of our bylaw where two means of egress are very important. So maintaining that uh, preserves all options in the future for them to develop it. So that became a water easement because of the wetlands. My lot and 27 <coughs> for a swimming pool every spring, from my understanding. So there is a water easement now along that strip. There's a pipe that runs along that strip that empties the water or overfills, takes care of the overfill, then runs across the front of our properties and then dumps out to the vernal ponds on the... So when you um, say water easement, I think you mean drainage, drainage, drainage easement. Drainage, 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 yes. drainage easement. Drainage that's, that's easement. That's different. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> drainage pipe that um, controls that overflow to keep, I guess, my property dry. Can, can I ask you when your house was built? I think 79. Okay. I think 79. Coincidentally. <laughs> so your house was a vernal pool in the spring? It would have been, yeah. That would have been the previous owners, the Carters. They didn't have natural heritage back then. <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, there's leftovers of it. My front yard is one big dip. So, uh, Kate, do you have any questions? Just some comments. 
I appreciate, I, I, I have some issues that it's not the owner who is requesting this. He has a right to his property, which is now zoned in industrial, and I now understand why they did the ANR so that he would be grandfathered, so independent of what town meeting decides on this, he will have the right to continue using this for industrial purposes. Um, looking at this, because of this 57 foot right of way here, even if it were subdivided, developed into houses, I would say they could probably get three houses in there. There are no restrictions on except for setbacks as to how much of the parcels would be cleared. So in terms of detriment to your, your vernal pool and such, to me, a housing development there is, as is, is just as disruptive as what uh, an industrial um, purpose could, could be. Well, there's a difference between a few families living there to hundreds of people using that on a daily basis. Hundreds of people is, I think you're way overstating it. But that, well, 18 your, contractor that's your, base. Your, that's, that's your opinion, I, you know. As far as correct. water quality, I believe this is in the, I, that's why I wanted you to look well, at the water map. Water Resource Protection See District. If it's, I believe it's in the Water Resource Source Protection District. So uh, the zoning, I mean, of us, Planning Board, would have um, a say about uh, harmful chemicals. They have to demonstrate harmful, uh, what they're going to be using for any chemicals. Is there anything? So they, we do have some control issues like that. It, it does, does appear to be in a zone two water resource yeah. protection. So it, it would qualify for that. Um, so that would be interesting to history. Why, what, how much of it was zoned industrial before, and was there some zoning, uh, something before town meeting that converted some industrial to uh, residential? Is the belief that more of this was initially industrial and then got converted to residential? Well, that's that's a question because it's such an odd thing, and, and why why did they make it so that the parcel isn't like the other ones on Carl Thompson Road? Right. What why why did they leave the, that um, that 50 foot right of way? But I, I just pers I I have an issue with a butters coming and saying we don't like this guy. We're going to rezone. We want the town to rezone his property because we don't like what he can do his, with his That's property. That's understandable. And, and I, I do have an issue with that. So The goal is to increase the community. So like I said, the proposal that I have is that it would be a great piece of property yeah. to benefit the town of Westford to increase our community. Um, putting something like the condos that are in Alder Point would be a much better fit. Like if you can imagine that pink piece being white, it makes more sense to the diagram because the other properties are on Groton Road. This one is in the woods. It's not right off of Groton Road. It's about mm -hmm. 750 feet off of Groton Road. And it has not had any use. It has not been any use that has actually come across so far that's been compatible. Like I said, this was not like, hey, we don't like this developer we started looking at this saying that this is not an appropriate use for this property in 2018 when it was when but, but again you did you want to deny the owner his rights to his parcel and ideally I would love to have that it, I mean ide ideally if your neighborhood could come up with a, the purchase price and buy them out and yeah that and would then, be ideal <laughs> but even if somebody were to keep it zoned industrial 1a we haven't seen things come by that are compatible with this particular piece of property. We're seeing monstrosities coming our way. We're seeing things that it's like, you know, why didn't we do this in 2018? Why didn't we do a citizen's petition in 2018? It was blind faith that this was going to be just like the rest of that industrial park, a building, 
no nuisance. You know, we did never anticipated that it could balloon to something this big. Could I ask, has anybody reached out to the owner to talk with them? The, actually, the, um, the lawyer reached out to us okay. to discuss it with us. Um, the, and the first, the first meeting that we had with them was, if you were part of it, I mean, it was just one of those things where I think we were still a little flabbergasted that something this huge could come into the neighborhood. And again, it ended and we kind of trusted that, all right, you know, like somebody who purchases this project, uh, property and wants to be a good neighbor is going to be a good neighbor. We're gonna, you're, you're talking to us, you're going to build this up into something that is compatible with our community, something that is a good use case for the town of Westford, isn't like a, I'm going to make my money and go kind of situation. So we honestly did not anticipate this or we would have done this petition years ago because it has sat idle. It has sat idle, at least like since I've been there, it's just been an empty building. That happens a lot. All of a sudden that idle <clears throat> piece of property yeah. gets developed. There? No, I appreciate your know, presentation. I think it's, I, I understand where you're coming from. Um, when you say community, obviously you're thinking about your neighborhood. When we think of community, we have to think of, you know, Westford, the bigger community here too, which this piece is zoned as Industrial A along Route One, you know, Route Forty. So, I think the totally. the owner sold it recently to somebody that wants to develop it as it's currently zoned. Um, so it's hard for me as on the board to say, yeah, we should change that zoning because someone just bought it for that reason. So. You know, it's a tough spot. Um, it, like as Kate said, ideally, if you talk to the if you talk to the new owner and say, "Listen, would you be amenable to putting in, you know, six, you know, du duplexes?" That might be a great solution for everybody, but they may not have that um, as their plan. So that's kind of where I am. Dylan. Uh, thanks. So uh, I guess I have three three comments or points, and I'll, I'll try to keep them brief. One, I, I really think if we took this action and did rezone this, I, I think there's a high likelihood a land court could find this to be spot zoning, although rather than the parcel owner themselves putting forward the request for zoning change, it's the abutters. But at the end of the day, it's still somebody requesting a change in zoning for the, the benefit of their parcel's value. Um, so I think that, that it would represent spot zoning to do this in this way. Um, my, my second point is I, I kind of agree with what Kate said, which is I have a, a concern with the idea of considering a rezoning request that's coming from somebody other than the parcel owner themselves, um, because that, that feels like it's potentially directly undermining the value of the parcel that the owner just bought, right, as opposed to the owner having a strategic use or a, a thought in mind of what they want to do with the parcel. Um, and then lastly, what I will say on the other side of the coin, um, and I don't know if Attorney Robbins or, or anybody from the, the person who would be the proposed uh, applicant of the cell storage facility or the specifically the Business Innovation Center, but given you know what we just uh, approved on Make Peace Road, I do find myself questioning how many more business innovation centers where you can have you know a couple of dozen contractor trucks and, and small offices packed in that the town really needs at this point. So. If there is going to be an industrial use there, it would be nice to sort of think outside of the box a little bit and things that have already been, you know, put in other places in Westford. Those are my comments. Thanks. Great. Thanks. <clears throat> so, um, I guess go to the audience. Do you have any comments? Um, my comments echo what everybody okay. else says. Yeah, I can't support changing somebody else's property. Mm -hmm. um, I guess Attorney Robbins here, if she'd like to talk first, and then we can go to the audience. Titus is. Uh, good evening, members of the board. For the record, Attorney Melissa Robbins from the law firm of Farrell and Robbins. I'm here tonight for Walter Erickson, who is the owner. Uh, he does object to this rezoning petition. I know that you have a letter in your packet, so I won't rehash all of those points, but I will point out, just because you've asked the questions, uh, this was a subdivision that was done in 1979. Every single purchaser, every single abutter bought their property after 1979. I think I have a statistic that this was completely constructed by 1995 and 80% of the abutters bought their houses after this was almost completely constructed. 
I don't think that's the point, though. I think the point is that this is a retaliatory zoning petition. Uh, my client, Walter Ac Erickson, actually approached the abutters, has not made any applications to the town of Westford yet. Um, and this is a direct repercussion of us reaching out to the abutters instead of coming to this board first. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so I would just caution the board that it would stop a lot of my clients to doing that action in the future. Um, and I think to Bob's point, I think that if there's issues with incompatible zoning in a district such as Route 40, if you see repeated variance requests and repeated turnaround on uh, industrial projects, maybe it's time to look at some master planning for the Route 40 area instead of dealing with these as a response to applications, especially things that are allowed by zoning. I won't labor it anymore. I know you have my letter in your packet, but we are here if uh, you need to answer any questions. Right, thank you, Attorney Roberts. I just want to point out that we did apply for planning grants to do a corridor study of Route 40 because of the prior citizen petition. Uh, we just were not successful in securing those grants, but we were trying to make an effort to get monies to study this because there's obviously some friction between the residential and non-residential uses on this corridor. So I will just note as well that if you rezone to an RA zoning district, there is no duplexes. It does not look like Alder Point. Alder Point was done through Mass General Law, Chapter 40B. Uh, the town of Westford is above 10% of their sub subsidized housing inventory, so no longer has to accept applications under that. Uh, this is also, if it, you went forward as a residential in an IA zoning district, it would require a use variance. Uh, so I just want you to think of those ramifications. Probably out here you're talking about two building lots uh, for conforming zoning at best uh, with some of the ramifications that you've talked about. And if it was a 40B, they could get probably 16 to 20 units in It'd there. Be a, it would be a substantially bigger number. This is uh, 4.3 acres, um, so you could do duplexes, but it would probably be a larger number, and it is always in fours. And then you'd have two residential houses coming off an industrial road, right? Yeah. Correct. Well, yeah. They, could, they could come off Come off forest. The forest actually has some wetland areas, as they've pointed out. Uh, so Carl Thompson is the best means of egress. It's not that you can't do it, uh, but we would look to come off of Carl Thompson and not come off of Forest Road. Uh, even for the industrial project, we were never proposing to use that Forest Road tail, always through the Carl Thompson subdivision. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mike, do I have a question? Oh, sure, absolutely. Uh, did I understand Jeff said that, that we applied for a grant to look at the zoning along the Route 40 corridor and we did not get that grant? Was that right, Jeff? That is correct. So, but we do have some other funding that I think this board made available for us to do some research studies and other activities. Could we perhaps consider the zoning on Route 40 as one of those activities? You can. It's up to the discretion of the board. Great. Thank you. Thanks. <coughs> Titus Palmer, 15 Bowes Road. Um, I just want to offer my two cents because I actually have a connection to this property. My father and his partner were the developers in 1979. Uh, and it's my understanding that the property was bought with the 1A zoning in place. And like much of the property that's owned Industrial A um, on Route 40, it was part of the Fletcher Granite. And everything that they owned when zoning came in was zoned Industrial A. The dog leg to Forest Road, I believe, also has a water main easement that brings water down to Route 40. And I think the possibility of bringing residential access through that would violate your um, grade requirements for a driveway and the requirement that you access uh, over your frontage. Um, I, you know, I came here for gun rights tonight, but I agree with the comments that you said. This is zoning that has been in place almost since the time zoning was created it's public anyone who's taken the time to look knows i understand the applicant's concern that is what this process is for when they come before this board so i would encourage you not uh not to support this petition thank you thank you uh, anybody else in the audience any comments Patrick Shields, 51 Forest. Uh, I'm also one of the abutters. Um, 
I echo most of what Maria presented. Uh, I do agree it is definitely a novel use of uh, rezoning where normally it's the owner trying to rezone. But I will point out that existing case law uh, says specifically, uh, I think Maria pointed out um, that it's for the benefit of the owner, right? If the change benefits the owner and it detriments everyone else, that is spot zoning. But specifically, if there is any public benefit, a rezoning cannot be spot zoning, even if a private landowner derives some benefit. Lanner v. Board of Appeal, 348 Massachusetts, 220-229-30, 1964. Randy v. Town of North Attleboro, and W.R. Grace and Co. versus Cambridge City Council. So it has been brought up, and if there has been stated in the courts that if there's a public benefit, then it cannot be considered spot zoning. Again, this might go back to court if it were to go, I don't know, but I think, I feel like that would be a good basis to say that it does not apply if someone were to bring that to, to call it spot zoning for the town to, to protect themselves. Um, and I also, the, the key points, you know, Maria had a very long presentation about all the things, um, but the key points for me that I wanted to re-echo were that, um, again, the area, is surrounded by residential property. It has been since, pr presumably it's been built, built and maintained as a residential property effectively, right? It's had a small residential building on it. So the rezoning uh, does change the zoning, but it doesn't really, it, it harmonizes what is in reality with the zoning. Um, the final point is that uh, the the zone as it exists now you know we can keep coming back every single time there's a new thing that wants to come up and and the idea here was to to stop having to reapproach the board every single time someone's doing something that's potentially harming the wetlands and our well water and being one of the people that has the closest well water that is a great concern of mine which was what started this again with the uh, a1 uh, landscaping units so those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? So we'll get a motion to close the public hearing. So no, oh. Hi, Elisa in the Cash and Hallsburg, Six Betty Lane. Um, I also have a well, and I live on the other side of that, next to all of that industrial property. I've really never had any issues with my industrial neighbors. I like them. Um, in fact, I was here when Laval was looking to expand his building. I was the only residential neighbor who came to say, hey, it's a great idea. Um, the only issue I think I've ever had over the years was El Paco had some compressed air that was really noisy um, coming out of the building, and they were immediately happy to resolve the issue. No issues whatsoever. Um, so I don't have a problem with industrial property next to mine. I'm right over there and one of the industrial lots belongs to us as well. Um, I am concerned, however, we had the, re the, the neighborhood meeting that Attorney Robbins was kind enough to put together for her client, and I think those conversations are very important. I think we tried to get the message across that, yes, there are other businesses that do well, um, but can you come forward with a proposal that isn't going to make it so difficult to live there? And so far, the proposals we've seen are just not compatible. They're not harmonious with uh, my neighbors or with me, honestly. Um, and so we would rather go to town meeting with your support. One way or the other, I guess the neighborhood decides whether we want to go to town meeting or not. Whether we do this time or not, we can always go back, right? Um, but I'm in support of the client being able to use his property to be able to make some decent money. That's why he bought it. He bought it from my old neighbor, Mr. Cassidy, for $651,000. And you know what, in Westford, sorry, $651,000 is not a lot of money for four acres. So I don't think he's gonna have any problem whatsoever making a return on his investment. I am asking in a public forum that he please consider the neighborhood and consider proposals that are much more in line with what the Lavals are doing, what, with what Alpacos and with what Westford Cat is doing everybody in the neighborhood is doing and, and 
so that we can be supportive and not <coughs> not have to come back here and um, and go through this angst anyway so part of what he's feeling here is not all him we were in this room this very room and I believe it was I know it was Dave Earl who sat right there during a ZBA hearing and after a very difficult time for the board they, they had to hear a one who were landscapers of ours who've lived here all their lives and they had to hear us residents everybody everybody who has a voice right in the room they, they had a very hard time having to hear what was going on and they themselves admitted it's a residential area by and large it's a residential area they, they knew it they understood it and they had concerns about some of the same kinds of noise and risk to well water that we've got currently so what would the board propose that the residents do I, I'm here asking for feedback because I'd much rather have your support but if you don't want to support it I think it's fair that the neighbors here ask you how do you protect them how do they protect themselves because one way or the other this either ends up in a cooperative place where attorney Robbins and her client engages us in a way where the proposal is a win-win for everybody the town the neighborhood and for him or it ends up back at town meeting or in these hearings or in court I don't think anybody wants that nobody wants that I think we'd rather see a harmonious use like happens on everything else on Carl Thompson Road any suggestions uh, I mean I, I I can't speak for the whole board I mean I don't know that I have any suggestions on on exactly the scenario but you knew, do know that this will come back before us with whatever they propose and there will be site plan review and you know if, if this doesn't get changed and there's something that comes in you know we have some criteria that you know we'll look and do what we can to protect the neighbors um, well I think with all of your concerns Alicia uh, there are a lot of controls in place uh, one through the, the Conservation Commission process through all of those with the wetlands with um, the vernal pools uh, with the, the, the critters hmm? they're too far away but with the critters if there if there really are some of those migratory species yeah. on that parcel they're going to get protected okay um, I just don't want to do this through a zoning change and relative to that I do have a question I guess maybe to Jeff or Joe we did have an ANR come through on this this parcel that's correct and so at this point in time um, even if there was a zoning change that ANR does that protect yes. that so, rights to develop that as um, industrial A yes so that ANR plan which has been recorded in my opinion it does provide a zoning freeze for a period of three years for use so up to those three years um, they could conceive even if town meeting passed the zoning bylaw amendment they could try to still operate in terms of uses under the existing zoning bylaw the industrial a zoning district but then what would happen what would ha the so they come through it and if they came through with the um, proposal that they had that could go through the process be constructed and then go in use yes and it would be in perpetuity basically until that's right so if they if they come in under that zoning that they would be allowed they come in with all the permits necessary when the three years go by that does not mean that they suddenly have to close doors and remove it they're they're in legitimately full sunshine so I think I think to your point Alicia so even even going through and doing this zoning change doesn't pr give you the protection that you might think but there are some protections I think the neighbors have already spoken to attorneys and you know what, what the deal is um, I have another question though I'm hearing concerns about spot zoning and I, I think we all feel very comfortable that this would hold up in court and this is clearly not spot zoning uh, it's surrounded on three sides by residences uh, and, and I don't and mean to drop but I don't think that's, that's, that's fine, a, but I have a question either. so we did change zoning for was it Kimball's or was it Neshoba's key I can't remember town meeting years back we did change the pets, zoning pets, for pets. what's that that's pets pets thank you thank you and we did change the zoning for the building right around the corner from there not too far from me um, where the hair salon was right so that yeah, it didn't um, get changed no. right. so what's that it did so it did get I believe it did secure favorable uh, vote of the planning board to recommend it to town meeting but at town meeting the petitioner was not there so it was, it was passed I remember now thank you but my point is that has been entertained 
and it did, as you say, secure approval. So it's not like we haven't been doing it. Right, but there like was a difference there. It. That was the owner was petitioning, right? Okay, so you're saying the difference is that the owner is, but the residents don't have. I'm not saying I'm right saying, but okay. there's a big difference for me, right? Understood. There's a major difference. Understood. For me. Um, so, but once again, I, I I ask the board, how do we help the neighborhood as well, right? Because this is looking like an incursion that um, that we. I'm hoping that my speaking here allows Attorney Robbins and her client to hear that I'm not against business here. I'm for a harmonious use as we see on the remainder of Carl Thompson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks. You. Okay, I think there was a motion to close the public hearing. Is there a second? Well, Wait. can we retake that? I'm sorry. Sure. I move that we close the public hearing. Well, let me ask one more time. Anybody else? Okay. Sorry. Now I move we close the public Thank hearing. You. Second. All those in favor, Bob? Oh, aye. Kate? Aye. Darren? Aye. Dylan? Aye. I say aye. All right, so I think we've got <clears throat> two, three options. Um, one, we can vote in favor. One, we can vote not in favor. Or three, we take no action. Um, I think we should also see if we can direct the <clears throat> uh, land use office to see if they can do some of that money and do a study, a zoning study for the area. Um, right. But it's <clears throat> what's the flavor of the yeah. board? Well, given the discussion, I would say I'm not comfortable voting in favor. Again, changing another <coughs> property owner owner's rights. I'm not necessarily against it. I would say I would be in favor of voting for no action by the planning board. Tough call. That's a tough call because I think you, we need to we need to provide some guidance to town <coughs> meeting, and I think by taking no action, we kind of shirk that responsibility. Unfortunately, we don't give them our guidance. You know, for me, if this was the inverse, if this was a residential parcel, and they're trying to convert it to industrial A, I'm totally opposed to that. It is in a, a residential district at this time, but for me, I'm having a really tough time here with something that's been re industrial A for quite a while, probably going back to the time when these residences were constructed, and now saying because the residence surrounded this industrial A, we need to change that zoning to industrial A against what appears to be the desires of the property owner. Um, I do understand the need to protect um, the rights of those residential users, and I think there are mechanisms in place through our, our zoning laws to do that. Um, also through the wetland um, and the conservation uh, process as well, ponds comp process. So I have a real hard time um, changing the zoning on it on an owner's parcel. Dylan, uh, yeah, I, I agree with uh, with everything Bob just said. I mean, you know, ev every other parcel that has frontage on Carl Thompson Road is zoned industrial A, right? So we, we'd have the end parcel. Is suddenly zoned residential. Yeah, I, I, I'm unfortunately I'm not in favor of this one. I understand the the uh, abutters' concerns, and and I, I'm respectful of that. Um, but I just think, you know, I think Bob nailed it. We we or some I think Bob or Darren was saying we wouldn't do this the other way, right? If this was a residential parcel and they were asking to zone it industrial uh, A, we wouldn't do that. So I'm a, I'm a no. All right. A call for a vote then. All those in favor say aye. Opposed? Uh, what? Uh, what? Uh, the recommendation. Oh. We have a motion. A motion. A motion. No, I, I, mine wasn't seconded. So, Bob, do you want to make a motion? Or, or Kate? You want to make a motion? I'll make a motion that the planning board uh, not support um, a change in the zoning from industrial A to residential uh, A at this time. Just give me 23 hours. For, 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 for that we do not we do not vote favorably for uh, for PB uh, for, for 2305 no for for this zoning article right. we do not endorse this zoning we article do, yeah so there's a motion is there a second second so there's a motion on PB 2305 that the planning board vote not to support the zoning change from industrial a to residence A, seven Carl Thompson Way. Uh, all those in favor of not supporting this, say aye. Bob, aye. Kate, aye. Darren, aye. Dylan, aye. And I say aye. Good luck, guys.
Thank you. I mean, I just want to say to Elisa, I mean, I, I hear the concerns that Elisa brought up. Um, I just don't think we're going to actually address those fully with this solution. No. I think we still need to find a solution how to protect that, especially given the ANR that went through. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we also would be setting a bad precedent here because there are a lot of other industrial parcels left over from the Fletcher Quarry, larger portion of parcels up in this area and this is just going to come down to, to more of these in the future potentially and it's also setting a precedent for the neighbors changing what a, a, an owner can well, do jo uh, just a little detail so we will be looking for some kind of report for town meeting and I don't know if you're willing for staff to sort of synthesize some of the comments tonight and I don't know if we can designate uh, the acting chair tonight to maybe review it make sure it's consistent with your intent so we can also get this yeah to. and the other thing Jeff I guess I'd ask from from, from you I know I, we've discussed this in the past on other parcels there there is some state law that kind of um, restricts our ability to, to to take from the value of a property and that, that's what we would be doing and I'd like to understand that aspect of the law um, not, it's kind of the inverse of spot zoning, you know. Um, if we were to change this to a different use, uh, we would be potentially impacting um, the value of the parcel for that owner. I mean, I know what Alicia said, but I'm not convinced you can put um, three homes there yet. I haven't seen the, the proof. And the other thing I, I do disagree with is that the value of this parcel at 600000 is quite reasonable that's about the going rate for what would be three buildable lots from what I've seen in this town so it seems to be right in line with the, that size of parcel because it's only four and a half four point three acres so I think back to your other question yeah that's fine I'm happy to review it board amenable to that approach yes yep thank you very much and um, to go on what Dylan had mentioned earlier um, out of curiosity, how much was the grant for that you had applied? Well, actually, I did misspeak. We had started that process. There's an initial phase where you submit what you want to apply for for the grants, and they told us for that grant round that it was not competitive. So essentially, don't waste any further resources applying for this. It would not be, be deemed competitive in this round. And that's largely because of the MBTA um, housing mandate that's receiving as we expected the priorities um, so we knew we would not secure that but, but how much were you expecting? I don't remember how much we were asking for might be around 50,000 75,000 somewhere in that range. so that would pretty much t that would take up a lot of the money that we earmarked it it would but you know if the board finds it to be you know worthwhile cause and you know maybe easier to gain support you know for that town-wide master plan you know um, through other means mr. chair I I, I move that uh, we no, <laughs> I move that we ask town staff to perhaps provide some initial information on that at a future meeting we're happy to do that at a future agenda yes not tonight but right. in a future agenda so that uh, we might consider your marking some of the Summer Village funds to to help get this I think that's a great idea. going. Yeah. Great, we're happy to do that. All right, thank you. All right, moving right along. Uh, seven Liberty do Way. I have, do we have to vote on that, or you just that sufficient? Not we're not looking for any kind of votes that's not on the agenda. So <laughs> we, we got your message. Okay. Right, so PB two three zero seven seven Liberty Way. I Mr. have a motion to waive the reading. I move so move second all in favor Bob aye Kate aye Darren aye Dylan aye I say aye motion to open the public hearing so move Bob second 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 uh, Bob aye Kate aye Darren aye Dylan aye I say aye welcome good evening mr. chairman members of the board for the record attorney Kevin Erickson on behalf of the applicant Ryan development LLC here before you tonight on a site plan review request um, due to a change of use at the property or a portion of the property located at 7 Liberty Way. 
Um, the applicant is not proposing any exterior site alterations here. It's in the entirely limited to the interior of the 4,000 square foot premises. Um, all the work, as I said, I'm sorry, I'll wait one second. Thank you. The proposed um, tenant space in here is um, an indoor commercial recreation, indoor play space. Um, the tenant is uh, named We Rock the Spectrum, and they're geared towards uh, children with special needs or children who might not have access to your typical indoor play space because of uh, sensory challenges. So we are very excited to have this tenant in this space. I apologize. Um, we should have discussed the fee before I open a public hearing. Ah. There was a waiver to reduce oh, the yeah. fee down from 3300 to 500 I would uh, say this, ask the same question that Bob had before, like how much effort has there been on the part of I think this expected? has been pretty similar to other changes of use that you've reviewed administratively, um, even though it did also have some time in front of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, your usual administrative fee is 300 um, So I guess, you know, for making up for a time of processing. So 500 uh, uh, So, okay, so, so I, I will move that we um, approve lowering, reducing the filing fee from 3000 to $500. All in favor, say aye, Bob. Aye. Kate. Aye. Darren. Aye. Dylan. Aye. And I say aye. Thank you very much. So we were last month before the Zoning Board of Appeals for an expansion of a pre-existing non-conformity on this site to allow for the indoor commercial recreational use in the IH Zoning District, and that was approved. Uh, that decision has been filed with the town clerk now. Um, again, we're excited to have this tenant join us. We think it's a great mix for this tenant space. We think it's a great amenity for the community. Uh, we know there's been residents that have been very excited about it, and even in the surrounding towns. Uh, uh, that's the case. So with me tonight, I have Mike Costa, our asset manager at Ryan Development, as well as Samantha O'Brien, the proprietor, the proposed tenant of uh, We Rock the Spectrum. So if you have any questions between the three of us, I hope we can answer. And if not, um, you know, <clears throat> I'll give you something that sounds good. <laughs> so uh, the only, to, just to begin, I think probably many people might have this question. I saw that there was a variance or there was a, um, there was <coughs> when this was built, there was less parking spaces than required. Do you anticipate, I think there's 233 parking spaces, do you anticipate parking being an issue? We have never had uh, parking as an issue here. Even when we went for the reduction in parking, uh, back when the Goldfish uh, Swim School was put uh, in place, it's, it's never been an issue. And I, I especially don't anticipate it from this uh, change because we're not creating new building space, we're infilling an existing uh, 4,000 square foot tenant space that actually has hours, busy hours that are very compatible with the rest of the tenant spaces. Most of those other tenant spaces are your typical nine to five mm -hmm. tenant spaces. The busy time for a We Rock the Spectrum and indoor play area is not during the daytime, generally when children are at school. It's more evenings, late afternoons and weekends. Well, what's um, the current use of that building? The it's a mixed use building right now. So um, let's see, um, New Path, is in, it's sort of an educational uh, use. There's some office in there. Mike, is um, and then uh, prior to uh, Puma had been in there for a period of time. So, all right, uh, I'll go to the board. Bob, questions, comments? Yeah. So the the concerns I have, I think we started to discuss them, are one, the parking, understanding the parking demands. Um, I'm looking at another indoor recreation facility we've had a lot of discussion of in the past year and a half on. And the second would be understanding noise and what the surrounding abutters are. Um, again, being indoor recreation, we thought that it would be fine, but we had another property where noise was emanating from the property. So um, I'm not sure, I don't think there's gonna be an issue here given the type of use, but I do wanna understand what kind of things take place inside in terms of music, um, is it basketball or is it, you know, we saw swings, I know, in the pictures. So, so I just I'll want to understand what is generating potential noise. I'll speak generally about the location um, and the, the surrounding properties, and then I'll ask uh, Samantha to speak just to the specific uh, use. 
but you know, generally Liberty Way, uh, where this property is situated, is deep within the existing industrial commercial uh, park. So all of our neighbors are um, commercial and industrial uses. Um, the tenant spaces that are next to um, Samantha would be uses that are compatible, and there are tenants also. Um, so you know, there, there's no issue there. So from a noise emanation, a, a bothering of the neighborhood, this couldn't be a more perfect right. location. And I don't think there will be noise emanating from the premises, but I will let uh, Samantha speak a little bit to it. You might want to, I don't know. Sure, I, that. Um, I think. Just identify yourself first. Yeah. Sorry, Good Samantha O'Brien, um, the proprietor. We would have a capacity of about 40. So even if we were operating at capacity, you know, the little people need to have their grown-ups with. So we're not going to have a lot of children in the space at that time. Um, and we have to very carefully consider noise because children with autism and other sensory processing disabilities are very sensitive. So loud noises um, puts them at risk of being upset in the space, and that's counter our, our mission. Great. Jane? So you don't want noise anyway? No, no we don't want noise. <laughs> Thank you. Bob? No, I think that's a good point. I just want to make sure we're yeah. on the record on this because we've had this yeah, with point. some similar parcels. Sure. No. So, okay. Um, let me no. just, one follow up question though. Given that that's the intended use um, to Joe, how does this get recorded for us? So, obviously, let's say they want this was a facility that was going to change from this use to now one that might be one that could have children's parties, whole different use. I mean, how do we how are we classifying this uh, in the records? Fall under indoor or outdoor commercial recreation. That's it's very broad. Yeah, that's the zoning category would fall under. Okay. So I think there's certain protections we're getting from the fact that you have special needs childrens here, and as Samantha just pointed out, that is going to limit the the, the, the noise. But if you were to change this to another type of ch child space. Would that necessitate a change of use review by this board? I would just I would just suggest that even if this were not, um, it is it's it's terrific that it's we rock the spectrum and then it's geared toward, uh, you know, autistic children, children with special needs. Um, but even if it were not, if it were BB Kids, which was down at 364 uh, Littleton Road, we never had any issue with noise with tenants next to it. It's a similar location in that there's no residential properties nearby. Yeah, so exactly. even if you were to infill it with another indoor commercial recreational use that was more typical, um, I don't think it would be an issue at all. And does not your company control that building proper? So if there were an issue amongst tenants, it would it would be our yeah. problem. Yeah. We'd be dealing with it. <laughs> They're all our tenants. Yeah, I'm fine. No, thank okay. you. Thank you. The, the parking was my only real concern, so I just want to understand this. The limit of 40, is that a capacity limit or is that a you, the owner, limit? Um, that's the capacity. When it comes to our programming, we really want to cap the number of children enrolled at to have no more than 20, just because we have to just ensure the safety of, of our crew at any given time. So be like 20 kids and up to, tw up to 20 parents and plus staff, so maybe 45 maximum, well, so 20 to 25 cars at a time, and, and what's the parking, how many spaces? No, just in this, for this building? Uh, it's also all of Liberty Way of that property, three, five, and seven, they share uh, parking per their yeah, leases. Yeah, and, and I don't, because yeah. I don't go there. There, there's, a, I, there's a lot of available parking at any given okay. time on Liberty Way. Because <laughs> okay. I remember when Goldfish came through, we were really concerned about that. I haven't, go ahead. Yes, and we did diligently at the request of the zoning board go out many times on different days, even weekends, different hours of the day to check oh that in fact there was not any parking issue. And interesting today is when we're reviewing uh, draft information from the MVP tree uh, plan that we're coming up with, uh, the consultants opined upon looking at our parking requirements 
that they were excessive as compared to many other communities. And of course, the goal is to minimize the amount of impervious area. But um, even they noted when comparing against other uh, communities. So that's something that they're going to recommend. And you never noticed a problem in, in with parking in that area is what you're telling me. No. And we were and zoning you, board it, made sure that we checked on that. Okay, great. So. No. So, so that I'm fine then. Okay. Uh, just one other question before I get to uh, Darren. Do you have a, a plans for signage? I don't think we formally finalized the signage plans, but we know we'll have to present those to the board at some point or there is a signage process and yeah it, so it, it depends if it comes in um, as of right meeting the requirements then you may not see it right. if they're exceeding those standards then they may need benefit of a special permit yep. okay, great I'm sorry go ahead no nope, I think it's great I think uh, parking was my major question and it sounds like that's that's gonna be no problem so I'm happy right. with that Excellent. So, yeah, same boat, parking was my only question, and uh, it's been, you know, alleviated through the discussion, and, and I did used to work down there, and I can confirm there there is ample parking on Liberty Way, so no issues. Great. All right, thank you. Uh, anybody from the audience have any questions, concerns? <coughs> um, so I guess we could uh, close the public hearing, direct staff to draft a decision for the next meeting. Is that reasonable? Yep. So moved. Jeff, you have a look? Mm -hmm. I was just wondering, recklessly, that given that there are no oh, yeah. exterior site improvements, I didn't know if the board was open to just us draft. It's literally a change in. Yeah. There's, there's some waiver requests, correct? No, just the, uh, just the application fee. We've already okay, taken care of that. Because it's a change of use and nothing else. I am all in favor yeah. of that, yeah. Jeff. I'd be in favor of that. You want me to be nice to you? Okay. Yes, please. <laughs> More so being nice it, to the applicants. Yes. <laughs> hey, no, Darren? Yeah. Did we go to the public for comment? Yes. We did. Oh, we did. Sorry, my bad. I, I'm satisfied because I know that there's. this is going to be a very short decision to write. And yeah. Won't be much in it. All right, so do we have a motion to have <coughs> direct staff to write a decision based upon the discussion tonight? So moved. Second. That's close. also to close the public yeah, hearing. Yeah, I was going to. Did we? <laughs> did we actually take the vote to close the hearing? No, because Dylan interjected and asked about public okay, hearing. So, is there a motion to close the public hearing? <coughs> so moved. Second. Bob? Aye. Kate? Aye. Darren? Aye. Dylan? Aye. When I say aye. Aye. Now. Now, I, I, I move that we direct staff to prepare and finalize a decision for PV 2308, uh, the site plan review for, I'm sorry, sorry, 2307 site plan review for Seven Liberty Way. Great. Second. All those in favor, Bob? Aye. Kate? Aye. Darren? Aye. Dylan? Aye. And I say aye. Great. Thank you good very luck. much. Thank you. Yeah, good luck. But don't count on me to be nice every time. <laughs> don't worry, Kate. <laughs> you, you're I'm running out of those opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more meeting. Three. All right, so next we have PB 2308, the Citibid subdivision in the Warpod, uh, 472, 476 Groton Road. Joe. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you have the applicant here tonight. We have a, as you noted, proposed subdivision, war plot special permit, uh, stormwater management permit, and I think the applicant has a presentation for you. Wait a minute. We haven't opened it yet. We haven't. M Mr. Oh, Chair, I, uh, move, I move that we waive the reading of the public hearing notice for PB 2308. Second. All those in favor, Bob? Aye. Kate? Aye. Darren? Aye. Dylan? Aye. And I say aye. Mr. Chair, I move that we open uh, PB 2308, uh, whatever, s site, sub Def definitive, definitive sub subdivision plan, subdivision plan for <coughs> 472, 476 Groton Road. We want to do, we also second. have two uh, special permits. Oh, and the special permit and the We have special permit for water resource protection overlay district as well as uh, storm, storm water, water management. management. Yes. Second. Second. All right, all those in favor, Bob? 
Aye. Kate. Aye. Darren. Aye. Dylan. Aye. And I say aye. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. I can't read. <coughs> Joe. Okay, so uh, the applicant is here tonight um, as a presentation for you all to view. Uh, again, as you noted in your motion, it's definitive subdivision, special permit, for war pod, and it's for more management permit. Great. Ms. Attorney Robbins. Good evening, members of the board. For the record, Attorney Melissa Robbins from the law firm of Farrell and Robbins. I'm here tonight with Doug Lees, who's the project engineer, <coughs> as well as Walter Erickson, who is the owner of the property. Uh, we're here tonight for the property of 472, 476 Groton Road. As Ms. Hollister has pointed out, we're here tonight for a definitive, subdivi definitive subdivision, geez, special Good, permit under <laughs> Warpod, it was hard, Kate, and the stormwater management permit. Uh, this property is zoned RA. It's approximately 8.18 <coughs> acres. Uh, we're proposing that the project be named D. Donato Drive. That name has not been approved yet through E911, but this is what we're proposing. This is in honor of one of the previous homeowners. Uh, the proposal is for seven conventional lots. Uh, the existing home, which is at 476 Broughton Road, will be maintained. As pointed out in your staff report, all those extra sheds and everything that are along the property lines will all be removed, <coughs> so they'll all conform to all of the setbacks. All new homes will be uh, four bedrooms. Uh, there'll be sidewalk and trail access, as you can see. Uh, the trails will go through the back right now of lot three. I'm sure you saw Mr. Salem's comments, though, that he'd like that slightly adjusted, so we will be working with Conscom to adjust that to connect to the existing uh, trail system that's behind the project. And then we're also proposing a single sidewalk down De Donato Drive, and then you can actually see it leaving the site and going left uh, that's intentional. Uh, as you know, uh, Gary Lavelle, Valletta Inc. is starting his construction on his site as well. There'll be a sidewalk there. Um, the, there'll actually be a connection to the next property, which will lead right to the entrance of Greystone. So we actually have some connectivity. So it was wonderful to actually build a sidewalk in front of one of these projects uh, where we have some connectivity. I will stop there and allow uh, Mr. Lees just to give you a technical overview. All right, thank you. Um, the, uh, the lot is, like Melissa mentioned, was uh, originally two single family homes. One of them has been raised. Um, the, the one that's going to stay was a, a um, multi family. So it was eight bedrooms or six bedrooms. Uh, Board of Health mentioned that in the memo. But the new, the, it's being renovated now, so it's going to become a four bedroom home. Um, fit in with the rest of the neighborhood. So it'll be seven four bedroom homes out at the site. The site is extremely flat aside from the ridge that's on the eastern side. You can see the hill there on lots, lots two and three, um, and a little bit in the back of lot one. The rest of the site is extremely flat. There's a slight pitch about halfway it slopes towards the front towards Scranton Road and the back half slopes towards the back towards the wetlands is that town of uh, Westford property in the back that has the trail system on it. We've located part of the trail that's highland bit. Obviously, it extends in both locations, but that was just the section we located where we're tying in. Um, so the road is going to come in. This is, meets all the subdivision standards. We are requesting six waivers, mm -hmm. but none of them are for the, uh, the road standards. Um, it's 24 foot wide, uh, sidewalk on one side only, grand <coughs> curving. The cul-de-sac is the 70 foot radius pavement cul-de-sac. The road pitches up from Groton Road and then pitches back down towards the cul de sac. So there's two ponds proposed one in the front near Groton Road on lot number seven, and one in the back between lots uh, six and five. Uh, both of those are infiltration ponds, and there's roof recharge provided for each of the houses, of the new houses, the existing house uh, doesn't have that added to it. And each one will be on an individual septic system. We've done test pits for all the septics. You know, when we submit plans, hopefully we can use the test pits we've done. But we got most of them we didn't encounter groundwater down to eight, ten feet. Some of them we had groundwater at six or eight feet as we go back towards the wetlands. But it's really a nice sandy material out there. Um, there is water that will be brought into the site with a hydrant. Obviously, it hasn't been reviewed by engineering. We did have a pre 
pre-submission They made some comments that the plans we had done at that time, we made some changes to try to uh, address their concerns before we submitted. Hopefully, when we do get the plans we do them, we'll have addressed the, most of their comments, so um, we'll wave a list now quickly, if you would like. Um, the first wave we're requesting is uh, from the section that requires the uh, location of trees 10 inches in diameter or greater in the in the area of the roadway. Um, we didn't locate those trees when we were doing the original survey because we weren't sure where the road was going to be. So we asked for the waiver so not to have to go back out there and locate them. I understand you sometimes do a site walk so we could look at that area when we do that. That's what the board wishes. All, obviously, all the trees that are within the roadway are going to have to come down. So we're going to be trying to stay uh, 100 feet from the wetlands. Right now, the, it's only the house on lot four that's within the 100 feet. And we're looking at maybe rotating the house a little bit after talking to the Conservation Commission to pull it further away from the wetlands so we get the house itself, <coughs> at least in the driveway outside the 100 foot, although there'll probably still be some grading. But uh, that's one change that we are preparing to make to the point. The second waiver is for the two sidewalks. Uh, as we mentioned, we're providing one sidewalk along the eastern side of the road, and then it turns and goes easily on Groton to tie into the sidewalk that's being built next door. So, requesting to waive the sidewalk on the other side of the road has a, there's no, nothing to tie into on that side. And <coughs> it's only six lots, it doesn't seem really warrant a sidewalk on both sides. Then the, the waivers are kind of from the engineering. Requirements. So next one is a, re a requirement, a waiver from the uh, pipe discharging above the 25 year storm event. And that, that I don't know if you're familiar with that w with regulation, but the outlet pipe going to the pond, the regulation wants it to pond to be able to pond, pond up during the 25 year storm event and then the pipe to be set at that elevation. Now we could do that, we'd have to do it by one or two different ways. We could raise the road two feet or lower the pond two feet. We could lower the pond because there's no water table, but then you end up with a deeper hole in between the houses, you know, deeper ponds. And that doesn't really seem like it would be, uh, you know, very attractive. And the other choice would be to raise the road up a couple feet, and that means bringing in more material and raising the front yards to match the road and a lot more grading and a lot more earthwork. And uh, we talked about that at the preliminary meeting and engineering seemed to indicate that they might support it, but obviously they'd have, they'd have to take a look at it. So um, that was one of the waves. <coughs> the next one is, um, I just want to skip, I think, to, yeah, to number five. I want to skip number four because the next one relates to that, that store drains have a minimum of four feet of cover. And that uh, is the pipes coming out of the catch basin right now are set with two feet of cover in the back of the road and three feet of cover in the front of the road to get four feet of cover again we have to push the ponds down or raise the roads up to, uh, two feet so to meet both those regulations we'd really be raising the road up four feet or pushing the ponds down four feet because we have to raise the road to get cover over the pipe and then raise it again to get the pipe to outlet two feet above the pond so the pipes are tested and they're warranted for just one foot of cover at the minimum we have two feet of cover and at the other end we have three feet of cover so um, we're confident that it's okay. Like, you know, we've submitted it to engineering. And they'll agree with us. And then to go back to number four is the requirement that drainage basins be located 30 feet from all property lines. Um, this one, when uh, we originally submitted it, we had pond number the number two was relatively close to that western lot line. And, uh, at the preliminary meeting, we discussed it and we moved the pond on the lot line to get it so that it's 30 feet away from the neighbor's lot line. To the west, <coughs> but it's on the lot line between lots six and five, so obviously it doesn't meet the 30 foot setback. It's, that way, we can split the easement and split the pond and encumber both lots instead of having it all on one lot and covering, and covering just one lot. I believe the four bay is also only 20 feet from the road right away. And the same thing with pond number one in the front of the project, it's 30 feet from the neighbor's lot line to the west, but it's 10 feet off of the right away lot line. And there's an existing <coughs> culvert under the road there, so we're trying to get the pond to work in with the existing culvert where the overflow, the pond's designed to hold up to the 100 year storm event, but there's an overflow, so the overflow would go into the existing drainage if there's some chance we got more than a 100 year storm event, but 
I, I think out here with the sand, even as it was, I, I can't miss <laughs> ever holding water. It's, it's, it's beautiful material. So those two ponds um, are within the 30 feet from the right-of-ways. So technically that's a lot line, although I, I think the regulation was probably meant to keep the ponds away from the neighbor's houses and the roads, but there's a lot line. So that's a way from that. And then the last waiver was the, um, the regulations require reinforced concrete pipe and HDPE, the ADS plastic pipe. Um, it's come a long way, it's a lot easier to install, a lot easier to maintain, <coughs> last longer, probably last forever. Uh, we haven't been around that long yet, but it's, it's, it's durable and like the rest of the plastic, it'll never go away. Yep, that was the waivers and and just a point to the waivers, I see the engineers have submitted this to the engineering staff and they have their estimated cost savings at zero. I don't think my client had drafted those, but as you can see from the description of the engineer, the significant work that's uh, necessary if we don't get those waivers. So we will adjust those uh, fees upwards, I can trust That was you. going to be my first question. <laughs> I think there may be costs involved with us not complying with those sections. So we will revise those waiver sections uh, accordingly. Um, the just to go through a couple of the you did get comments from fire i think they want a clean sweep analysis my engineer mm -hmm. did want to give me a hard time about that since we are complying completely with roadway standards without any roadway waivers uh, but we are going to submit to deputy chief um Denny, Denny. yes the uh, clean sweep analysis with autocad so he'll get that this week uh, we got some general comments from cons conscom <coughs> Most of their comments were about an issue with a vernal pool uh, that really affects lot four, uh, but quite honestly, the vernal pool is located within the wetland. We have some area that we can adjust the infrastructure in the house away from that vernal pool area, so we don't think it's going to be an issue. Um, like other projects, the only area that we're affecting here to the resource area is lot four, so we're not going to have a project-based um, NOI here just on lot four only. So it makes our life a little bit easier when we go to conservation to get this done. Um, I think those are the only comments we've got so far. Uh, we will be asking the board to send this out for engineering to review. I know Paul Starrett's not here tonight, so we can talk to talk about when we would probably want to push out to to mm -hmm. give him time to review. And the other thing I was going to ask is for a site visit. I know all of us drive by this probably on a daily basis or at least once a week, but especially for the tree waiver and just to get a general feel of the site and the trail location, I think it'd be helpful just to get out there and take a look at the site before we come back to the next meeting. I live south of 495. <laughs> I don't drive this daily. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I will say I did speak with Paul Starrett earlier today. Um, they do anticipate having their comments available for the next hearing. Um, the pre-application meeting was mentioned earlier and the changes they've seen um, since that meeting, they're very pleased with. Um, so they anticipate having comments turned around Great. shortly. So that's good news. Yeah. Um, all right, so I will go to the board, Bob. My first comment, well, I'm going to ignore the waivers, number one, for the second, but waivers three, four, five, and six, I was going to ask. I just heard everything they said. It seems like pretty extensive work you're avoiding and pretty extensive savings. Yeah. So I think we're in agreement there. Yeah. I guess on number one, I'm, I'm going to have to be convinced a little more than what's written here about not showing the trees. It's not clear to me how many trees would be within that. It, we're only talking about the edge of the roadway. Um, and I know when we did some other parcels in town, it does allow us to see the quality of the trees that might be um, affected. Um, obviously, even just because they're 10 inches doesn't mean they're suitable for saving. Um, but it does allow us, the board, to look at the trees and decide which ones should be saved. Because sometimes we're putting in driveways where there are the most valuable trees as opposed to putting a driveway where there's a stand of trees that are in excess of 10 inches that are not worth the effort to save. So. That's my one concern about granting that waiver, and maybe that should be something that should be looked at uh, during the site walk. I do have one special request. I will try to walk that site tomorrow. I am departing tomorrow afternoon. So I would like to go out there and just quickly look at it at this time if that's 
amenable to your your Absolutely. client. Okay, so I'll try to do that tomorrow morning. So it's basically the center. If you can figure just, out where the center is, I just, I just want to look at the parcel and go back in there and see something yeah. about what's nice back piece. there. It's a nice property. Yeah. Right. Is is anything staked out yet? Just the test pits are marked out. Okay. Kind of find your way from the oh, test. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, oh, I'm sorry, Bob. No, 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 no. no, no. So, and then um, I'm all in favor for the, the sidewalks, as we always do, to wave one and, and, and provide the connector. And as you said, I think we're going to be able to provide a valuable connector in this case, um, especially along that uh, section of Groton Road. I know when we talked about another proposal that was in that area, that's a section that um, has had some interesting accidents along there. And so... Um, I think that, that there's a lot of value to that. And just the last question I had was relative to the curbing. I noticed it said vertical as opposed to to, to sloped. Is the, is vertical is what is normal. Normal? We yeah. usually have it at a, an angle. No, it's vertical, vertical granite. Vertical. The vertical is actually more expensive, but the engineering department at our site visit suggested that we put in vertical because it stands up to the clouds. Okay, all right, that's fine then. I just want to understand why that was selected. Are you done? I'm done now. <laughs> Sorry, Bob. Didn't mean good, to good, yeah. good comments, though. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I agree on the site walk. I do just want to give you a heads up that please work diligently with engineering because May 1st is <coughs> my last meeting, so we want to get this voted on by, by May 1st. So, because of the special permit requests. Um, I agree with the trees. I'd like to see what's out there, see if there are any along the side of the road that where the um, no off pavement, any that it might be worth saving. Um, thank you for the sidewalk. What is it, like five feet off set from, from the, uh, the pavement, the road pavement? Along Croton Road? No, no, no. Within the development, it's not. It's not a. No, it's, yeah, it's not a budding within the development. There is a landscape island. Which is great. Feet. Thank you so much, because especially with this, with the snow we have now, the sidewalk's not offset. Then they'll never use it during the winter. So I appreciate that you're actually following our rules and regulations. Um, on the waivers, I agree with Bob about waiting to see about the, the trees um, and the site walk. And I defer to engineering and possibly um, the DPW on your other ra waivers requests because you want this to become a public road, which is I can appreciate. But um, in the past, engineering has not been so amenable to some of your waiver requests for public uh, roadways because the town would be have responsibility for it as opposed to the residents. So, you know, that's a discussion item with you. Maybe there's something you can do with your drainage system to alleviate or remove the need for some of these waiver requests. Um, and my last comment is because it's a pub, it is a public road, but it's only going to service seven houses. That um, it's very doubtful that school buses will go down this road. <coughs> so we want to make sure that that there's a good area at the entrance for the, for the children to safely stand while they wait for a school bus. Good point. That, that's it for now. Great, Dan. And with that said, I, I would ask for school department input on this then, since this is a very busy road with a school bus stop. I'd like to make sure that we do everything yeah. within their recommendations. And that also brings up the point that we had over on um, Colonel Rawls with yeah. the trash yes. receptacles at the end of the road. Yes. 
But this is a public road. This is a road. public road. This, public this road. is designed, though, to actually meet the standards and right. be eligible okay. for pickup. We'll be in full compliance with the trash policy for yeah. curbside pickup. And we should be in conformance with the school bus standards that they should be able to come down the street and go through the loop road and come back down. But, but, uh, we'll, but I know they won't. We'll double check, Because yeah. they don't go in my neighborhood. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so. No, but we'll double check with them. And we'll reach out to Mr. Cronin as well, yeah. DPW, just to make sure that we're yeah. all set with the road acceptance issues yeah. prior yeah. to getting through the process. Yeah. And there is a sidewalk there too, which is nice too. Yeah. yeah. So the kids could cross yeah, away on that too. Then it has to get plowed in the winter or something. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think uh, I'm waiting to hear engineering's comments, um, particularly around the, the the grading, you know, mm -hmm. with the drainage. So I'm curious to see what they say there. But otherwise I like it looks like looks good to me. I'm happy to have the the grass inside the cul de sac as opposed to just a big parking lot. Um, yeah, yeah, looking forward to hearing engineering's comments. All right. Dylan. Hi, uh, yeah. No, I think uh, Bob and Kate, Kate's comments are well taken. And uh, the only thing I have, I'll look forward to the site walk. Um, if Attorney Robbins and their, her client could have some way for us to mark trees uh, specifically, that would be great. And to know and where the pavement would be versus what's... Yeah, if, if we schedule the site walk, we'll have Mr. Lee's out there and we can mark a couple of the major things, but we'll make sure that um, they can be um, staked out. Thank you. Probably not before Mr. Schaffer gets out there, no. but uh, before everybody else gets out there. Yeah. I, can, I can meet you tomorrow if you want, though. I'm right up the street. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'll get and, your number uh, after the meeting. Thanks for the sidewalk stuff, and then I agree with Kate's comments on uh, thinking about bus pickup for the kids. You know, one way or the other, it, you know, Broughton Road's a major road, so we should think about the entryway and, and having options for pedestrians. Great. Thanks, Dylan. Uh, Thanks. Anybody from the audience? Uh, sorry. This is a microphone. Lisa, Six Betty Lane. Um, isn't there a valve upstream in Greystone that adjusts Pond. Am, am, am I missing that? I'm, they I'm trying have a to remember. Dam, but you, I, you know I'm, what I'm talking about. I'm not sure it's actually working. Right. So will that impact this with your water level that you were talking about? I, I thought that was discussed at length some years back. Um, That's. Just bring that up in case the board needs to consider that. Is, is that? It's right up. It's right up. Uh, right behind yeah. it. You know. It's a ways. It's not right by. Is it a ways? Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, and remember, Greystone's up to, I don't know where my north air is, yeah. but it's up top, and this, our wetland is actually to the bottom of our site. And that, so would, that would affect Gilson Brook, which I don't think is any No better than I do, that's why I'm asking, that's fine. Um, and then the, did I understand correctly that one home will stay standing? Yes. Is that Ida's house? Yes. That's gonna, oh, that's wonderful. I'm so happy to see yes. that. Yes, thank you, thank you that you're yes. saving that, so, thank you. So that was listed as a duplex. That's great. That's great. Um, and the, the, I'm sorry, these are incidental questions, but I want to ask it anyway. The name of the street, do, is, that, is that part of the plan that you have to approve, or can that be changed later? We actually have, uh, we're going to be requesting this go through E911 before we come back to the next um, board meeting so that we can get this confirmed and also get rid of the lots and we have actual addresses on here. So when, if you approve the definitive subdivision, uh, they'll have the actual addresses with an approved street name. So this street name's not been approved yet. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. But if you don't like the name, you could always go to the applicant and suggest That's exactly why I asked. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I do believe there's a list of historic names that Ellen Hardy. Yes, Ellen keeps. Hardy is always requesting that. They start naming streets after historic folks. Yeah. All right, anybody else? So I think well, we'll continue this to the March 20 meeting. Mr. Chair, can I just ask before you continue, do you want to schedule a site visit or do you want to do that offline? I think we can do that offline. Okay, offline, yeah. thank you very much. But I recommend trying to get it done by the end of this month. Just, well, it would be better if it were before our next meeting. Oh, yeah. Huh? If, the, yeah, yeah. If, if Mr. Chair is inclined to do it before the next meeting for March 20th, if Mr. Starrett thinks he's actually going to have a review done by then, then we would try to have it done in the next week or so. That'd be great. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. It's your call. Um, all right, so if that's it, I guess is there a motion to continue this to March 20th? So moved. Second. All those in favor, Bob? Aye. Kate? Aye. Darren? Aye. Dylan? Aye. 
I say aye. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Can I get his number? Yes. Name, and, name, and name and number. Just write it right Doug's I know, I know who it is. No, I didn't realize it. Oh, okay. uh, Mr. Chair, may I? I don't know. We don't have much to do. I'd like to read my short break. Just write it on here. It's on the bottom of the plate. Just give me your name and number, and I'll, I'll send you a text message later. Perfect. I'm going to take a break. Uh, yeah, Kate, just to take a two minute break. That would be good. Yes, my son, please. Text me at that. 454. Okay. It'll probably be probably around 10, 30, or 11. I've got a vet appointment at 9. I've got a bunch of puppies. Well, I'm getting around pretty good. for the TV timeout. Yep. From Bulgaria. Oh, okay. She got there at 5.30 this afternoon. Oh. Flew to Heathrow, Mr. Yeah. To Sophia, so they ended up sending her to Frankfurt. I think Sophia today. I've been to Sophia. It's very nice. The old town's real nice. Is it? Yeah. I was there, I don't know, six years ago now? Five years. All right. So uh, we're back. We have uh, PB 2225 60 Pleasant Street. The applicant has requested a continuance without discussion to March 20th. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor, Bob? Aye. Kate? Aye. Darren? Aye. Dylan? Aye. And I say aye. <coughs> we have PB 2226. Uh, administrative review uh, approval for massage therapy use at 270 Littleton Road, Unit 31. Joe? Thank you, Mr. Chair. So this petition has um, also been in front of the Board of Appeals and received approval there. Um, the building commissioner has requested this be uh, administratively approved. Uh, it's an existing business, aroma spa therapy, so it's just adding an additional service uh, to their business there's no expansion there's no change in parking um it's in within old boston square um so that's that's pretty much it there's no change in signage no no other changes other than just adding an additional service to an existing business all right do you have an applicant no i don't no. believe so but given that it's administrative i wonder if the board will still consider yeah. acting on it if nobody has any comments, I move that we authorize uh, administrative review and approval for the massage therapy services use at 270 Littleton Road, Unit 31, Aroma Spa and Laser. Second. All right, Doe, did you hear all that? Yep, I did. Good. Um, all right, uh, all those in favor say aye, Bob. Aye. Kate? Aye. Darren? Aye. Dylan? Aye. And I say aye. Good luck. All Thank right, you. and last, we've not last, second lead to lastly, we have the review and approval for the draft decision PB 2302, uh, to 359 Littleton Road, Legal Arms Company. Uh, Jeff. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. So as the board may recall, at your last meeting, you did close the public hearing and directed staff to prepare a draft decision for your consideration this evening. So we did work with both town council and the applicant, and the applicant has agreed to this draft decision and the conditions therein as written. Um, so they don't object to this decision. If you do want to propose changes to this, please be just a little cautious because it has been reviewed by council. Some of the language is very explicit for a reason. Okay. I'm happy to try to answer any questions that you might have about the draft decision. I see Chief Chambers here. Did you want to add anything to the discussion? No, sir. I want to copy it. Okay. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right. I'll go to the board. Bob, any questions, concerns about the decision? No. Kate? No. Nope, I was fine with it. I did notice that um, the hours of operation for weekdays is 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Because I think I had originally proposed 8 but a.m. But if the applicant is fine with 10 a.m., then uh, let's leave it like that. Great. Darren? No comments. Dylan? No comments. I'm fine with it as written. Can I have a uh, motion? I move, what is, what's the beginning? <laughs> Why don't you do it? I move that the uh, board approve the change of use as proposed for PB 2302 uh, site plan review. For, Second. For, hmm? for 359 Littleton Road, legal arms. Did we already prove it, right? So this is just motioning to sign? So actually, I, I believe you voted to waive or reduce uh, the filing fee and yes. you directed staff to prepare the decision, but I don't we did recall not. that you actually voted, voted to approve it. We haven't voted on the decision. And if you would be willing to make reference to the draft decision, that would be great. And to, appro and to uh, uh, approve with the, as per the draft decision drafted here in our packet tonight. Is that sufficient? Yes. Yes. Another second, Darren, Dylan? Second, yep. I'll second it. All right, all those in favor, Bob? Aye. Kate? Aye. Darren? Aye. Dylan? Aye. And I say aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, on to the draft minutes from February 6th meeting. Motion to approve. Second. All right, uh, with discussion, all those in favor? Wait a minute, nope. I'm just making sure I didn't highlight. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, oh, I did have a, a correction. Uh, line 386, which is page nine, which is page 232 in the packet. <laughs> Uh, Hollister suggested including a requirement that the ZBA provided you. Uh, wait a minute. No, that wasn't it. Forget it. Um, oh, here it is. Sorry, page 10, line 468. Um, it had that. On the, the last line, 470, Holler, Hollister requested confirmation that the removal of the bocce court was part of the ZBA approval, and so strike the phrase, the removal of, because what I requested was confirmation that the bocce court was part of the ZBA approval. Right. Okay, makes sense. And that was it. That was it. Anybody have anything else? Seeing none, uh, motion to approve as amended. Bob? Aye. Kate? Aye. Darren? Aye. Dylan? Aye. And I say aye. Correspondence reports update. I don't believe we saw anything else in the package. Uh, oh, no, there was. I'm sorry. There's the uh, EV draft. It was the draft of the EV handout that was requested to be produced to hand out at town meeting. That's right. Good to me. Anybody has any questions or changes? We can get to Chauncey, I guess. I think it was good. Nope, I appreciate the work that they did, and I, I like their whatever this is. And our, our assistant planner 
has put in a lot of work uh, helping this uh, working group. A lot of work. I know <laughs> Chauncey lauds her every chance he gets. So. All right, with that, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. moved. Second. All those in favor, Bob? Aye. Kate? Aye. Darren? Aye. Dylan? Aye. And I say aye. Thank you. Good night, everybody.